We are living in a time where ancient diseases that have been frozen for tens of thousands of years are starting to wake up. As the Arctic thaws, scientists are uncovering viruses and bacteria that haven't seen daylight since the Ice Age. Some say the risk is low, others warn that we have no idea what's really buried beneath the permafrost. From debates over their potential danger to the challenges of studying them, these are hidden threats of ancient pathogens that have scientists terrified. Buried deep in the Siberian permafrost, viruses that haven't seen the light of day for tens of thousands of years are starting to wake up. In 2014, scientists revived a virus called Pithovirus sibiricum, which had been frozen for about 30,000 years. It was a giant virus, one so large it could be seen under a regular microscope. And more importantly, it was still infectious. The virus only targeted amoebas, but the fact that it was still active after so long raised a pretty chilling question. No pun intended. What else could be trapped in the ice, waiting to thaw out? In 2023, another team managed to revive 13 new viruses, some dating back 48,500 years. These included members of the pendovirus, megavirus, and Pac-Man virus families. Luckily, like pythovirus, they only infected amoebas, but their survival after tens of thousands of years proves that ancient viruses can stay viable much longer than previously thought. The idea of long dormant viruses returning to life isn't science fiction, it's already happening. And while scientists are careful to only study viruses that infect amoebas, there's no guarantee that other, more dangerous pathogens aren't also waiting to show up. With permafrost melting at an alarming rate, the real question is how long before something deadly resurfaces. And let's talk more about this faster rate of thawing ice, because permafrost is melting faster than ever before. Thanks to rising temperatures across the globe, areas that were completely frozen at one time are now turning into slush. This is a ticking biological time bomb. The deeper layers of permafrost contain everything from frozen plants and animals, which is pretty cool to see turn up, to bacteria and viruses that predate modern civilization. Much less cool. Take Siberia, for example. In some regions, permafrost is now thawing up to 60 feet deep, and anything buried in those layers is starting to come back into contact with the modern world. Scientists have have already found bacteria that survived in permafrost for over a million years. So if bacteria can last that long, there's no reason to think viruses can't do the same. The problem is we have no real way of stopping it. Even if we drastically cut carbon emissions today, permafrost would still continue to melt for decades. Every summer, more ice melts, exposing more of what's been frozen inside. And that means ancient viruses will keep emerging, whether we're ready or not. Now, people tend to think of viruses in simple terms, things like the flu or the common cold, but viruses come in an insane variety. A lot of them are completely unlike anything we deal with today, and some of the ones being discovered in permafrost belong to groups that no longer exist in the modern world, which is very scary, because that means we have no immunity to them, and no idea how they might behave if they infected humans or animals. One of the biggest surprises for scientists has has been the discovery of giant viruses. Unlike most viruses, which are microscopic, these things are big enough to be seen with a normal microscope. Some of them even have more genetic material than some bacteria. That's a huge deal, because it means that ancient viruses were more complex than we originally thought. Some researchers even think that certain viruses could be relics from a time when viruses and bacteria were evolving alongside each other. Then there's the issue of unknown pathogens. We've only scratched the surface of what's in permafrost. There could be viruses that infect humans, animals, or plants that we simply haven't discovered yet. And unlike modern viruses, which have been studied for decades, these ancient ones are a complete mystery. If there's one thing history has taught us, it's that viruses can be unpredictable and devastating. Smallpox killed hundreds of millions before it was eradicated. The Spanish flu in 1918 infected a third of the world's population. And 2020 showed us just how stuff can spread globally in a matter of weeks. Now, 
Imagine a virus that's been frozen for tens of thousands of years suddenly being exposed to humans. We have zero immunity to it, and modern medicine has no treatments for something that hasn't been seen before. Well, that's the kind of risk permafrost poses. And it's not just viruses, bacteria can also survive in permafrost. Scientists have found bacteria that have been frozen for millions of years and were still viable when thawed. Some of these bacteria are resistant to modern antibiotics, meaning that if they reemerge, they can cause disease diseases we have no way to fight. Ancient viruses and bacteria aren't just a threat to humans, they also could wreak havoc on ecosystems. When permafrost thaws, it releases more than just microbes. Entire frozen animal carcasses are being exposed, along with bacteria and viruses that were inside them when they died. For example, in Siberia, melting permafrost has revealed perfectly preserved woolly mammoths, and ancient bison, and even prehistoric wolves. These animals might have carried viruses that aren't around anymore. Those viruses are still active. It can infect modern wildlife, setting off this chain reaction that throws ecosystems completely out of whack. And we've already seen how one outbreak can spiral out of control. In 2016, a thawing reindeer carcass released anthrax spores into the environment. This led to an outbreak that killed thousands of reindeer and infected dozens of humans. So if you think the idea of ancient pathogens coming back to life and causing harm is just theoretical, think again. That year, a heat wave had hit, causing permafrost to melt in places that had been frozen for decades. One of those places contained the carcass of a reindeer that had died from anthrax all the way back in the 40s. When the permafrost melted, dormant anthrax spores were released, infecting both animals and humans. The outbreak was fast, and it was brutal. Over 2,300 reindeer died, dozens of people were hospitalized, and a young boy even lost his life. Russian authorities ended up having to mass cream made infected animals to stop it from spreading more, and entire communities were placed under quarantine. That was just anthrax, a disease we actually know how to treat. If an unknown virus from permafrost were to reemerge, we wouldn't be so lucky. There isn't a clear consensus among scientists about how much of a threat ancient viruses and permafrost actually pose. Some researchers are pretty confident that most of the viruses being discovered will only infect amoebas, making them a low-risk cure curiosity rather than a global health risk, but others are worried that we simply don't know what's still buried in the ice, and to just assume safety based on limited studies is dangerous. The reality is we haven't uncovered most of what's trapped in the permafrost, and the risks aren't just theoretical. One of the biggest concerns is that viruses evolve over time, but so do their hosts. If a virus from 50,000 years ago targeted an extinct species, there's a chance it might not find a viable host in today's world, but that's not guaranteed. Viruses mutate, and some can jump between species. The longer we disturb ancient layers of permafrost, the higher the chance we uncover something that still has the ability to infect mammals, including humans. Another question is whether frozen viruses are even stable enough to cause an outbreak. A lot of viruses break down over time, even in ice, but studies on Pythovirus sibiricum and other revived strains show that some viruses can survive for tens of thousands of years and remain infectious. So at least some ancient viruses are durable enough to show up again intact. Then there's the concern that permafrost doesn't just preserve viruses, it also preserves bacteria, fungi, and other microorganisms, some of which could be antibiotic resistant. We've already found ancient bacteria capable of withstanding modern antibiotics, meaning that if a strain with harmful traits were released, it could be extremely difficult to treat. Unlike viruses, which need a host to replicate, some bacteria can lie dormant for millions of years and wake up once conditions are just right for them. So ultimately, the debate isn't really about whether ancient pathogens are being released, it's about how much of a risk that they pose. So what do we do? Well, tracking what's happening in permafrost is becoming more and more of a priority. Scientists can't monitor every thawing area, and a lot of regions where permafrost is melting are remote making it pretty difficult to collect consistent data. Even when researchers do find ancient viruses, the process of studying them safely is complicated. Unlike modern virus research, which benefits from decades of experience and established protocols, working with something that hasn't 
hasn't been seen in thousands of years obviously complicates things, and for obvious reasons, the few research teams studying ancient viruses focus mostly on harmless strains, ones that infect amoebas only. But this also means we don't have much data on viruses that could be more dangerous. If a virus that could infect humans appeared, handling it would require extremely high measures. And most labs just aren't equipped for that level of containment. Another challenge is that permafrost isn't melting evenly. Some regions are thawing much faster than expected, others are relatively stable. The unpredictability makes it harder to track where and when new pathogens might be released. In places like Siberia and Alaska, massive sinkholes and collapsed ground Ground formations have already exposed these deep layers of permafrost. Some of these areas are so remote that by the time they're studied, whatever microbes were inside may have already spread. There's also the issue of funding. Studying ancient viruses is important, but it competes for attention with more immediate health threats. The focus is, understandably, on things that are already circulating rather than this theoretical risk of some ancient pathogen rising out of melting permafrost. This means that even though research is happening, it's not on a very large scale, so it's going to take some time. That said, it is improving. Some projects use DNA. DNA sequencing to analyze melting permafrost, identifying viruses without having to revive them in a lab. Others use satellite imaging to track permafrost loss over time, mapping areas at the highest risk of releasing stuff. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video.